Great news everyone, Brackies is back. And to celebrate, I wanted to make this video talking about tutorials and mainly tutorial hell and how do you make sure you don't get stuck in it. So if you have no clue who I'm talking about, Brackies is probably one of the biggest Unity tutorial creators. And after a almost three year hiatus, I think at this point, he has returned. This time, not with Unity. Friendship with Unity is over. Now it's Godot. Going to be making a lot of Godot tutorials. Good for him. But I want to make sure that you and hopefully other people who maybe are starting to get into game development don't fall into the trap called tutorial hell. Very quickly to like summarize what is tutorial hell is, you want to start with game development, but you have no idea where to start. So you watch some of our videos and you watch some of CodeMonkey's videos and maybe now also some Bracky's videos and you just consume tutorial after tutorial after tutorial. Maybe you spend a few hundred bucks on a course on Udemy or on a Thomas Brush course or whatever. It all stacks up every day basically you're watching tutorials but you feel never ready to start on your own game or you even try to start on your own game but turns out you have no clue still what actually needs to be done. So you go back to those tutorials and then suddenly two years has passed and you have no game still after all this time. And of course, I don't want that. I want you to actually be able to make your game. So I want to talk a bit more about how do you escape tutorial hell. Now, most people get stuck in the programming aspect of tutorial hell, I feel, because that's also some of the more complex stuff, like 3D models, you can work standalone and just create more and more. Whereas code is something where you really need to have that overarching vision. So I'll be talking mainly about code first, but at the end of this video, I'll also talk a bit more about general tutorial hell for things like modeling when you're stuck with that. And when you're learning to program, especially for game development specifically, the main issue that I often see is people don't understand the big puzzle. That's always gonna be the biggest issue is there are so many tutorials out there. And there are so many great tutorials out there of things like how to make a mini map in your game or how to do very specific kinds of A star navigation, for example. And all of these tutorials are great. You can follow them along, you can make your own sample projects, but the issue lies in actually taking that one individual isolated component and then putting it together into your big game. Because there are two issues here. The first one is that you probably are lacking some of the overarching code principles. I think that is something that we need to start with. Game development is very much a subset of traditional software development, where there's a lot of concepts such as solids and different kinds of structures for your game projects that is literally just a regular boring ass business application that now just has a nice flashy front end framework on top of it and is actually fun to use instead of most like SaaS applications. And because that's kind of like the boring part of software dev, there's not that many people who talk about it. And another problem is that these patterns and such are very language specific as well. To give you some context, I studied computer science and there, even though I wasn't specializing in software development specifically, I still got two years of just software architecture, basically, where you learn about those principles of how does everything tie together. There is a lot of stuff you can do it. I'll link some resources in the description that can maybe help you get started with it. But if you don't have that base, it does not matter how many game dev tutorials you follow, you need to have a base understanding of code to begin with. So I know this is not gonna be the most helpful, but if you're really just beginning in programming and making your first games, probably you don't want to actually make a game from the get-go as your first programming project because it's just gonna make life harder for you. If you have no idea yet what singletons are, well, it's easier to learn that concept in a regular boring application versus in a game. And this is not the sexy answer. I know that nobody wants to make yet another to-do app, but those are things that are going to give you a better idea of how is that structure. And also there are more tutorials about project structure in the regular side of software dev YouTube versus game dev specific. Also keep in mind that these things are very language specific. So what it works, for example, with C Sharp and then Unity, will have different structures with, for example, Unreal and Blueprints. But the concepts overall are all borrowed from traditional software dev. So having that core first is going to help you a lot with fitting that puzzle together. And then another problem with fitting everything together, and this is a bit of a general software dev issue as well, is everyone has a different style. Everyone has learned programming some other way. And even like Thomas and I, we studied one year apart from each other, same computer science course and everything. But looking at the way he programs versus the way I program is completely different because 
we had a different style that we were taught. We just had different experiences. He learned from some online sources as well. I didn't. And because of that, those overarching concepts are in there, but actually the nitty gritty of where do we define like our class properties or whatever, like really boring stuff. Those are different already. And every single tutorial you follow from like a different YouTuber will have a different style. And this is something that is very easy to combat. And this is also what I want to recommend to you if you are starting game development and you are just looking into how do I learn it is only get a single course. I don't care which one. You can get the very expensive one from Thomas Brush. You can get some like cheap ones on Udemy or you can do something like the Unity Pathways, which is completely free. But the important thing is you stick with that single tutorial the entire way. Like it's like 20 to 50 to 100 plus hours of just learning game dev from a single person with a single consistent style. If you are mixing like 10 different styles and maybe some people are like completely self-taught and they have a completely non-standard programming style, taking tutorials for them is only going to confuse it for you. So go for a very big tutorial for the first game and the first prototypes that you're making. Only once you actually feel like you have those base concepts of the software dev done, then you can move into getting those individual tutorials and trying to fit them inside of your project of like, how do I add an extra animation or an extra controller or how do I add dialogue, for example. Only add those once you understand the core of the game already, if you understand the core structure and how everything fits together. So really understand just that the high level overview is very important. Now, as I said, I'm not the best programmer. So if that is something that you're interested in, like how do I plan out high level the entire structure of my game, then leave a comment down below where you tell Thomas that he shouldn't be lazy and he should make a video about how do you get up with that high level concept and things like that. I've tried to talk to him about it a few times, but he never wanted to do it. So maybe if we can get a massive flood of people who are telling him to do it, we can get it your way. Because I think the guy knows what he's talking about. He's just kind of lazy when it comes to making videos. And online, when you talk about, oh, I'm stuck in tutorial hell, you often get one other big piece of advice, but I think it's kind of not nuanced enough. And it's, oh, just make bigger games and like stick to the same project, duh. Like, how could you not do that? Then you won't have that problem. Just start with your dream game. But I have two problems with that. The first issue is what I like to call the shiny object syndrome. Every game dev has that probably at some point where you start off at your game and you love it. You like are in love with your game idea. You write your game design document, you make that first prototype maybe, but then you enter what I call the Valley of Despair. I've made a video about it before, about like the five stages of game development and progress kind of slows down. You're not going as fast on your game anymore. Maybe you're getting stuck in those issues of actually, I don't know what to do. I don't understand anymore what the code is that I wrote like a week ago, but I have this really cool new idea that I think honestly is much better than whatever I'm working on right now. Let me just trash everything I've done now and move on to that next project. And then once I have more skill, I'll come back to this project and finish it. That's the cope everyone says. It is a cope, it's not true. You're not gonna come back to it. I know that. And this is something that is pretty hard to solve. It's like shiny object syndrome. You will go through this. Like you will have to make that mistake at least once to learn from it. I can talk to you about it as much as I want, but until you've gotten like two of those projects of shame in your own folder, it doesn't really matter what I say here. It's something you're going to have to realize. So get those things out of the way sooner rather than later. And then the second thing is that you won't feel ready enough for a bigger project. And I think, yeah, you won't be ready. But that's okay, because every time you failed is still the, a time that you try to make an actual game and you've spent like a month working on a project, even though it may have completely failed. Something we like to preach on this channel is that failure is good because failure still means you're doing something. It's way worse and you're going to feel way worse at the end of the day if you've spent three years on like 50 different prototypes that are all just like you blindly following a tutorial and like remaking Flappy Bird or whatever, it's going to feel better today, but three years from now, it's gonna feel way worse compared to actually having tried like two or three different kinds of bigger game ideas that just never ended up seeing the light of day because you weren't ready for certain things. So go forward, try to fail, and really the more you fail, the prouder I am of you. And that's not because I think that you won't be competition for us, it's because you'll actually be learning more and you'll be climbing your way out of the tutorial hell faster. There's no magic wand I can wave and you'll just get out of tutorial hell. It is something that you will have to go through, unfortunately, by yourself over a longer period of time.
So what about non-programming stuff? Because that's what I've only been talking about so far. What if you want to learn something like sound design? What if you want to learn something like modeling or 2D art or whatever? Tutorial hell is still a thing, but I think it's not as bad of a thing. The general concept still applies of how do you prevent this from happening? You start the first time you do anything with a very long tutorial that is like 10 hours plus of learning modeling or learning sound design or whatever to give you a single consistent style of learning. That's something that I didn't do for when I was learning Blender. And that was a big mistake because I just took like 15 different 10 minute Blender tutorials and that was how I learned it. And that was not a good and efficient way. And honestly, my style of working in Blender is really bad because also all of those tutorials were like for different Blender styles. I did like Blender 3.2, 3.6, 4.0 as well when I did it released. It's so over the place. Honestly, I just wasted a lot of time there. And now we have better artists who do it for us. So that's good for me, but not everyone has that option. So go for those long tutorials first. But here there's a bit of an exception in that like learning quickly stuff. And that is the difference between concepts and tools. Concepts is just 3D modeling, whereas tools is something like a blender or something that I do a lot is like Premiere Pro video editing to make these videos. I started learning Premiere Pro video editing with a single two hour tutorial of like, this is all the basic stuff you need to know, how to cut, how to use effects and things like that. And I kept on going from there. And then whenever I was making content, because it's something that you have more with like modeling and art and whatever is, you'd be like, oh, I have this one specific thing that I feel like should be able to be done, but I don't know how yet. Then is what I like to call just in time learning, where you can just find like a 30 second video that explains to you exactly how you get rounded corners on a video, for example, very basic stuff or some other blender shortcut that you didn't know about from before, but you were like, Hey, I figured this should be a thing. Let me see if I can find something very quickly and just add it to your index of these are all the different things I can use in my tools for something like just purely 3d modeling. You want to have those longer tutorials, but for those tools specifically, don't learn everything from day one. Those tools is something you want to learn as you go and as you get better instead of just overloading yourself. I know tutorial hell can be very tricky to escape from sometimes, but I truly believe that if you go into it with the right approach and you also just have to be hard ass on yourself and accept that life won't be perfect and sunshine and rainbows. And there will be times where you feel like you're absolutely stupid in the stuff that you produce and it's not production ready still push through that. That is all I can really ask for you. And it is going to be better in the long run to escape that tutorial hell. So I hope this already gave you some tips. If you were a previous tutorial heller and you managed to escape, let me know in the comments down below, what did you do? What helped for you to crawl out of that and actually get started to working on your own games for realsies as well? I'm really interested to hear about it. Honestly, I have never had too much issues with tutorial help, but I think that's also just because I have like a bit more pressure since this is my full-time job now and I can't just spend two years wasting around because I would go bankrupt at that point. So I think definitely you have some stuff that you can teach me there as well. Apart from that, thank you so much for watching. We make two videos every week talking about game development, talking about some stuff we've learned along the way. So if that's something that interests you, be sure to head down below and subscribe as I think there's a lot of useful stuff for you on this channel. If you want even more useful stuff, you can also head over to our Patreon where we upload six extra videos every month where I go more in depth into certain game development topics and things like running your studio. So check that one out as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.